So this is the Elegoo Centauri Carbon, which as of the time of recording is not a multicolor or multi-material machine. I've had it a few months now, and while I don't really do printer reviews, I have to say I've had quite a lot of success with it. At just $300, once you get everything dialed in with your filament, the quality is fantastic. Today, I just want to talk about some things I've learned about multicolor printing and a couple of best practices. Welcome or welcome back to Justin Nelson's Projects. If you're new here, I cover automotive, 3D printing, electronics, you name it. Subscribe for more fun, and now, back to the video. I've done a few side-by-side -side comparisons with the bamboo p1s a little uh coffee table organizer thingies and to be honest i couldn't tell you which one came off of which printer they are identical in every way if i look really really closely at the bottom i might could tell which pei sheet because the bamboo gold plate has just a little more texture than the stock elegoo version i mean print quality they're practically the same and the speed by the way they finished within a minute of each other and the elegoo got off to a much faster start doesn't do that whole song and dance or at least not nearly as much of one as the p1s but today i just want to talk about some things i've learned about multicolor printing and a couple of best practices firstly yes i said multicolor I'm going to ignore the multi-material aspect for today as that's a different topic for different use cases. I'm talking about adding colored logos to a print or painting an orca slicer and optimizing for the least amount of waste. We all know that the Centuri will likely get a multi-material add-on at some point. It already has all the prerequisites. A filament cutter, this little mystery port on the back, and of course the obligatory purge chute that we all have come to affectionately call the poop chute. So while the Centuri Carbon isn't currently multicolor capable, at least without manual filament swaps like the old days, yeah, that took, uh, that took some doing on my old uh, CR10 clone. A WhatsApp conversation with my sister somehow led to me creating this little silliness that you saw in the intro. For background, my sister and I play practical jokes on each other from time to time, so I've literally been saving all of my printer's purge materials since I first got the P1S over a year ago. She lives a few thousand miles away, and the idea is that if I ever ship something off to her, like a birthday present or something like that, I want to use an insane amount of printer poop as packing material. I mean packed real tight in a box that's just going to burst when she opens it. A fun mess for her to clean up. Not as bad as when people send glitter in a greeting card envelope. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's just how you lose friends. Just a little harmless fun. And being an artist, she'll most likely find a way to make something cool out of it. Now, being terrible at keeping secrets, I did tell her this plan, and she said I should have put that in my Colaguard box. Yes, I am familiar with the product. I mean, I turn 50 here in a couple of weeks, and uh, I also have the mind of a 12-year-old who still laughs at fart jokes. It's okay. I like it. So I immediately thought, I'm going to make a Colaguard-style box as a printer poop bin. And what better machine to put it on than the Elegoo since it doesn't really produce much waste compared to the P1S or even the A1 Mini. So I grabbed their logo, did a little photoshopping, fired up OpenSCAD, made a cube, a negative cube, a couple of keyholes, extruded a PNG, and voila! A two-part model. So I set out to print this thing using the P1S, of course. I obviously wanted the logo part on the build plate. If you can get away with it, that's by far the best and most efficient use of filament, as it'll involve the least amount of filament changes. Now notice the print time and the number of changes required with this orientation. If I flip it upright, you'll see that the filament changes in print time go up dramatically, since there's blue and white on many, many, many layers. If only I had a an H2D. <clears throat> bamboo <clears throat> hint so obviously the best way to print this little box is with this face down but you might have noticed a slight problem what's gonna hold this up can't print in midair i thought this was gonna be a real major issue but with the auto generated tree supports it actually came out pretty flawlessly sure i could have designed this side to print separately and either snap or glue into place but this was just a one-off print a stupid little gag print i wanted to make for myself plus any visual defects would be on the inside of what is essentially a little garbage can i forgot to film the support removal part but it was super easy barely an inconvenience really yeah it left almost no visual artifacts and again 
Even if it did, so what in this case? So another point I want to make here is that if you use the painting tools in Orca Slicer, in my experience, it's really hard to control how many layers deep the paint goes and I just find it extremely tedious to get it right with the least amount of filament changes. I much prefer to just make it as two models or more, drag them in at the same time and when prompted to merge it as one model or one unit, click on yes so that everything lines up perfectly. This way you know exactly which parts are going to be printed with what filament because you designed it as separate individual parts. Simply go to object view and select the color for each object as you see fit and then just slice. Even with all this tree support, the filament changes are very minimal and the filament wasted on the actual supports pales in comparison to all the swaps and purges of doing it upright. In fact, this is the purge tower from that print. I find it hard to even call this a tower. Now for completeness, I did make a single color version as well. Let's see if we can get the light to catch that right. I simply debossed and it came out a lot nicer than I expected. For what it is, gives you the single color option as well. That way it can be printed on the machine it's going to go on. I'll post this stupid design to printables and I'll link to it below. I can't post it on Maker World because I won't use Bamboo Studio, but feel free to remix, share, whatever. Final thoughts on the Elegoo printer. It, it seems like they really are taking their time releasing the multi whatever add-on and I hope they wait until they get it right. It does seem like that's the route they took with their first Core XY printer itself. It went out to specific reviewers long before we got a hold of it and they seem to have taken feedback very seriously, delayed releases and made tweaks until they knew it was a machine worth shipping out to the masses. And I cannot be the only one who was absolutely blown away when the price was finally announced. I almost pre-ordered two machines, one just for spare parts since that is probably the one major downside currently with Elegoo machines. I hope they get some domestic inventory of spare parts before it hits the fan. Anyway, at this point, via firmware updates, they've fixed a lot of little nitpicks like fans staying on long after a print finished or the UI freezing up here and there. Little by little, it's becoming more refined with just firmware tweaks. Not to mention, having a rather nice full-color touchscreen that the P1S simply doesn't have, unless you buy a Panda Touch or make one of these using a CYD and, of course, never update the firmware beyond 1.07 to sum up about the multicolor thing. While I don't really need a second multi-material machine, I truly hope they do make this option available and I can't wait to see what they come up with. Will it be a stripped down version of the AMS with a, a very affordable price to match? That's my guess. Everything it needs to be functional and nothing more. If anyone from Elegoo happens to see this, I would love to put any prototype or beta through its paces. Anyway, this was just a silly video I wanted to make, not just for the poop jokes, but about multicolor printing in general. Thanks for watching and hopefully you'll catch me on the next one. I promise this channel isn't all childish humor. <laughs>